Well, it turns out that these young teens, um, young bulls, had been orphaned during a cull when there had been mass killing. So they, they witnessed their mothers killed and their families killed, then, which is very traumatic. Then they were taken away um, when they were probably like two or three years old, and they were brought, translocated to a different area where there was not that same traditional structure of the natal family, of a mother and aunties and other babies. So they were really forced to grow up on their own. Then they didn't uh, experience that second phase of socialization with the other bulls. Now, it's more than just structure. When you look at what's happening in the brain and the mind, as we see in post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, you actually see that the, the patterns, the processes in the brain are shaped by the experiences. So when the bulls, these young bulls were killing the rhinos, it was really um, diagnosable as a trauma, as, a, as PTSD, just as we might diagnose someone who has experienced severe trauma, whether they're a veteran or whether it's domestic violence or some kind of other accident. Brad Shaw explains the social system among elephants that these young bulls were denied due to the killings they experienced and the isolation they experienced. For, for one thing, they are organized in many different sort of levels of society. So the fundamental unit is the family, and there's a matriarch with other aunties and, and babies. And that's the fundamental unit, and the babies are born, and they stay within that natal, they call it the natal family, until they're about 10 years old. Then the, the young males, the boys, are going off to a second phase of socialization with the all-bull group or all-bull area the females stay within the natal herd. So these are two very, it's very structured, very much like traditional humans' cultures and societies. So they're very structured. And those themselves, those units or those organizational patterns are repeated at different levels. So you can see layer upon layer upon layer of this very complex society where it's sort of like a very, very intricate web of relationships. And those relationships translate to what is happening and how the brain and the mind are formed. Elephants suffering post-traumatic stress disorder may seem far-fetched to some, but it does help explain the mysterious behavior and the importance of a social animal's support system. And how could an animal suffer this disorder if they don't experience emotions? Bradshaw documents the damage humans do when they remove social animals from their social groups animals like parrots. Parrots and are very similar to the elephants. They have extremely strong um, bonds and fidelity to relationship and um, they're flighted. That's the other thing. And yet we as a culture are conditioned to see uh, an animal in a cage as something normative, as something that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. So really we need to start looking through um, the, our own eyes of how, what we would feel like in those conditions. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bradshaw has established an organization called the Curulose Foundation to dissimulate her scientific findings and to foster education about the well-being of animals. Non-human animals have the capacities and the vulnerabilities that we do psychologically and emotionally. So our first few years were really really articulating a very solid scientific foundation. And then we've shifted into education and sanctuary. So we have a couple of programs that are what we call Educate to Action. So they're learning about animal minds, animal experience, um, trauma recovery. But then they're linked to learning, which we feel very, is very important it's philosophically, is taking what you learn and applying it to very concrete situations. So we partner with people around the world. Um, our students take the courses and then they actually put their work um, into conservation or animal protection. And that's a really important thing. It's a very empowering thing too because as you talked about, the world is changing very fast. So what we really need to do is to build capacity to care for basically animal refugees, uh, parrots who are abandoned, um, uh, tortoises, um, cats and dogs. And so a lot of our programs are really trying to help build capacity, social capacity to care for these individuals in need.